Good evening all. It's a pleasure to participate in this conference with my e-poster video presenting a novel technique to reduce the amount of post-operative pneumocephalus after bare hole evacuation of cornex subdural hematoma. Chronic subdural hematoma is a common pathology in elderly. Clinical presentation is wide and ranging from headache to deterioration of consciousness and seizures. Trauma is the most common cause of chronic subdural hematoma, although sometimes trivial and even forgotten. Coagulopathy and lumbar puncture may also contribute to this pathology. Plain CT brain is the most common diagnostic radiology, and the multiplanar CT increases the sensitivity to detect small convexity and interhemispheric collections. MRI is useful in detecting chronic membranes and differentiating chronic subdural hematoma from other similar pathologies like hygroma. Bare hole evacuation is a common and effective method to treat chronic subdural hematoma, but the recurrence rate is still as high as 30% in some studies. Postoperative pneumocephalus is a common complication and is considered as one of the risk factors for the recurrence. Several surgical techniques have been described in an attempt to decrease the amount of postoperative air like saline irrigation of the subdural space during surgery and head positioning. This diagram summarizes the pathophysiology of chronic subdural hematoma. Head trauma leads to splitting the dural border cell layer, then inflammatory cells drawn to the border cell layer, attempting at repair. So a new membrane formed from the activated inflammation and broke collagen. In addition to the angiogenic factors that promote formation of fragile capillaries within the formid membranes, blood leakage started from these fragile vessels, which causes continued inflammatory activation and membrane formation. Finally, the well-developed membrane line cavity continues to exudate fluid and the blood leading to expansion of chronic subdural hematoma. This diagram shows an IV cannula inserted in the subdural space. The cannula should be shortened to avoid brain injury. A Jackson Pratt subdural drain is seen inserted in the subdural space to drain the subdural air, and continuous irrigation of the subdural space through the IV cannula is being done till the last stitch of the wound occlusion. All patients operated under general anesthesia all had the standard bare hole evacuation technique. All patients had preoperative and third day postoperative CT scan with surgical endocoronary reconstruction. The subdural air volume was calculated using the formula width time length time height divided by 2. Nine patients had chronic subdural hematoma, seven males and two females, three had bilateral collections, that's to say 12 sides of collections. All had two bare holes for the affected side except one young lady with a unilateral chronic subdural hematoma who had one bare hole. All presented with headache. Seven had motor deficits. Six had confusion. And two had seizures. One of them was sensory and the other one was motor. In four sides, out of the 12 sides, the size of postoperative air was less than 0.5 cubic centimeter and the average size was 3.25 cubic centimeter. It was noticed that the amount of postoperative air increased with increasing the age. This is a 61 year old male patient presented with headache and left side hemiparesis. His CT scan showed right frontoparietal subdural hematoma. He was operated by two bare holes and the postoperative air volume is 5.67 cubic centimeter. This is a 42-year-old female patient presented with headache, sensory seizures, and left pronator drift. Her C scan showed left side chronic subdural hematoma. She was operated by one bare hole, and her postoperative air volume was 0.43 cubic centimeter. This 58-year-old male patient presented with headache, confusion, and right hemiparesis. Her C scan showed left side chronic subdural hematoma was operated by two bare holes and postoperative air volume was 5.9 cubic centimeter. 46 year old male patient presented with headache and confusion and left mild upper limb weakness. He had right 
front operator subdural hematoma. He was operated by two pin holes and post-operative air volume was 0.37 cubic centimeter. Here we have a 73-year-old male patient presented with headache, confusion, and forelimb weakness. His CT scan showed bilateral chronic subdural hematoma more on the right side. He was operated by two bore holes in each side, and the post-operative air volume was 0.27 plus 9.9 .9 cubic centimeter. We can say that this technique is simple, cheap, and effective in reducing the amount of post-operative pneumocephalus after bare hole evacuation of chronic SDH. Thank you.